When it comes to watching blockbusters, I have a five-star system for rating how good they are, because I think all blockbusters should do these five things. Have a plot that makes basic sense on first inspection. Have likeable, believable, and consistent characters. Be competently well-made, well-directed, with well-executed special effects and so on. And not be needlessly offensive and be relatively reflective about content in the films that might be kind of problematic for some people. Make me feel some things so they're funny or thrilling. Now, this is the first Fast and Furious film that I've ever sat through the whole way, and it's also the first one I've ever seen in the cinema. Sounds kind of crazy, but I'm old enough to remember when Fast and Furious was a franchise about people stealing cars, and now it seems to be about kind of globe-trotting super spies. But although I haven't really engaged with it as a fan, I am aware of the plots and the characters, and I've got a kind of grudging respect for it. You're on the eighth movie now, and you've got probably one of the most complex chronologies of any mainstream franchise. So what's Fast and the Furious 8 all about? This crew is about family. Dominic Toretto just went rogue. You want to tell me why you just put me in a room with this teen crumpets eating criminal? You gonna turn your back on family? I got no choice! They're all mine. Ah! Oh, damn! Oh, baby! <laughs> Woo! So with that recap out of the way, let's go through the five-star rating system and see what we think about the movie. Number one, plot. It's not a clever plot, and I don't think it ever really steps out and says, I'm trying to be clever. But one thing I did like about the film is that it's very consistent. The plot makes sense within the universe that it takes place in. No, it doesn't really make any sense that the US government has a freelance black ops team entirely based around stealing cars and doing crazy stunts, nor would it make any sense, even though that did exist, to give them total free reign to pick their own cars and drive Lamborghinis and tanks around Russia in a military separatist action. But does it make sense in the context of this film? Yes, absolutely. I think it's a stupid plot, but I think it's a stupid plot in a holistic sense. It's sort of everything within it is stupid, and as a result it actually hangs together quite nicely. One thing that really struck me was that there were very few plot holes, as far as I could understand it, in the movie. And that's partially because the film goes out of its way to try and explain some of them away. In previous films, they've set up this piece of technology owned by the government called God's Eye. God's Eye is basically a network of security cameras and satellites and stuff like that that allow them to spy on pretty much anyone in the whole world. That's a little overpowered, so the writers have to get rid of it quite quickly. And they do so just with a little economical scene where one of the characters tries to look for the people who are missing and they find out there's a program that redirects them so they can't retrace it in time. Okay, not a great explanation, but enough. It's like just a hand wave away the fact that they can't use God's Eye to solve the film straight away. It's that kind of stuff that I think is really important in a franchise of this level of continuity. It shows they have quite a lot of respect for the fans, and I like that. I think that's a solid thing to do. And the plot's also helped by the characters. Are the characters believable? No, not really. Are they consistent? Yes, absolutely. And do they serve their purpose? Do I understand what they're doing in the film, why they're doing it, and who they're doing it for? Yes. Dwayne Johnson does stuff because he has a kid. Okay. Vin Diesel does stuff because he has a kid. Okay. Ludacris does stuff because he likes cars. Okay. Charlize Theron was pretty great, actually, I thought, as the villain. She was really spooky, she had a lot of gravitas, and again, I understood that what she was doing. Now, there wasn't, like, a villain explanation scene. There wasn't, like, a moment when she said, the US government killed my parents when I was a child and now I'm back to come and get you. It wasn't quite as obvious as that. Mostly it was just that she's a good enough actor and the film gives her enough space to set up the idea that she's this sort of Moriarty type figure. And that's fine, that's a good enough motivation for a film of this scale. The other thing that the film really has going in its favour is that the characters are sort of likeable. Dwayne Johnson starts off the film by doing a hacker with his daughter's Pee Wee soccer group. I think that's really cute and it's kind of funny. I understand what kind of guy he is and he's fun. He has all these sparring scenes with Jason Statham where they just like argue with each other and you know you've got two really charismatic very funny actors in one room and you just let them rip for a little bit. That's 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 watchable. If it's an action movie like this I don't really need it to be that believable especially if the plot is that stupid. The fact that they're consistent and they're likeable is enough for the film overall. Is the film well made? Um... It all looks like this, really. It's just all these sweeping, fast camera moves and lots of, like, really over-the-top grading and explosions and Dutch angles and, like, slow motion and stuff like that. I'd be hard-pressed to say it was well-directed. Is it competently made? 
hell yes, competent to the max. I think for the people who come to see these films, this is the style that they want to see. And I've got to be honest, there's kind of a lot of fun, even just from a pure technical perspective, watching how they achieve some of the stuff they do. One thing that was a little bit of a drawback for me was that one of the main set pieces of the film was very CGI heavy, which in a film about car chases, I kind of want to see those car chases with physical cars. That said, this sequence, for instance, which closes out the film, um, on the ice is, is almost all practical as far as I can tell, apart from there's a giant nuclear submarine in it. Ultimately, for me, that's, that's kind of what I want from one of these movies. I want to see actual cars kind of crashing and bashing for that voyeuristic spectacle. And that stuff I think they do pretty well. I think they could do with less CGI, and my god, I wish they would sometimes just hold the camera still for a little while. The camera moves in almost literally every shot. I counted like six stationary shots as far as I could tell. Even on like a close-up on someone talking, the camera would just be like, dollying around, you know? But then for a movie like this, it's supposed to be hyperkinetic and it has to have this kind of like cheesy wham-bam kind of action and every scene has to be two minutes max unless it's got cars exploding and stuff. For that genre, for that approach, I think it's a really good example of it. I think it's technically well carried out and I was really impressed by some of the scenes. It opens off with a street race in Cuba and I thought that scene was really well executed. You've got two cars and four bikes kind of running around a living cityscape that felt very lively and real. And that, as far as I could see, it was executed well for the audience that watches these movies. So although I don't want to say that I think it's good, I think it's really competent for the genre that it's in. Is the film offensive? This is like I like to talk about just in case, because a lot of blockbusters have really weirdly toxic messages hidden within them. And I was very pleasantly surprised to find out this film is actually pretty straight down the line. This is a film that basically says, no matter what you do, if you do it with loyalty and good intention and you try your best to make sure no one else gets hurt, then that's okay. And that's a good thing. I think there's some odd assumptions in that, but I think by and large, that's a nice message for a film to have. And they actually do kind of do it. It's almost absurd at some points, the length they go to, to show like the strength of family in this group of people. At the end of this Cuban street race, Vin Diesel is like, mobbed by this group of little kids and they're all just hugging him and he's like yes i am a pillar of the community looking around it reminded me oddly of the luchador films the mexican mask wrestler movies um where you have these like upright pillars of the community dudes whose whole job is just to smack people around and be kind to women in the sense that it's not the most positive message it's not like the most progressive way of approaching that but it is uh, i think quite a nice one ultimately overall if you think about movies like Batman vs Superman, Civil War, they're films that basically say you can't be a hero and be moral. They can't be the same thing. It's nice that we have a picture like this, <laughs> weirdly, it's such strong praise for this movie, that kind of says being moral is okay. Granted, their idea of moral is that you can basically murder anyone you want as long as they've done one bad thing in their lives, but you know, morality is fine. The big litmus test for a good movie, did it make me feel something, anything really, especially if that thing was intended by the director and or creative team behind the movie? I don't think I personally was hit by that emotion as strongly as some people in the audience with me, but it's an emotional film at the end of the day. It says, do the things you can to protect your loved ones in your life. And I think that's, that's nice and good and fine. And I laughed a couple of times, so that's okay. I was impressed by some of the action sequences, so I was sort of thrilled. Ultimately, I think it does manage to make you feel quite Quite, quite a lot, um, not necessarily deeply, and it, not in a way that will affect your life, I think, outside of the film. But does the emotion within the film work? Yeah, I'd say so, absolutely. So, kind of as much as it pains me to admit it, I think that Fast and Furious 8, if we're gonna judge it on a very technical scale as a blockbuster, is probably a five out of five. It's probably a five star movie. And I'll say that with some caveats. That doesn't mean it's good, that just means that it satisfies an audience that it's aimed at, which is fine, it's all good. And I'd rather a movie did that, because people are paying for it. At the end of the day, people shit on these movies, but there's eight of them, and that says something about those films. It obviously speaks to some people somewhere, and the audience that I was in enjoyed it a lot. Is it worth taking time out of your day to watch it? Probably not. If it's on TV, if your younger siblings want to watch it, if you have a friend who really likes the movies and you want to go hang around with them and they fucking want to watch that picture, is it worth seeing? Yeah actually. I think it probably is. So with a lot of caveats and feeling slightly uncomfortable about it, I say this film is a good blockbuster. I'm not sure if they're going to let me into the art house cinemas anymore. Hope you enjoyed my review. Don't forget to click subscribe to get the next one when it comes out. And if you enjoyed the film, if you want to have a chat about it down below, let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation with you. That's it from me. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.